Lately I've been hearing the same message loud and clear from everywhere. Focus on and take care of yourself. How long have you let your self-worth and your happiness depend on other people and their actions? How long have you been holding on to the pain? And most importantly, how long do you want to keep holding on to it? Let's get one thing clear in the beginning. We play many roles in this life. We're the son or the daughter. We may be the brother or the sister. We are the student, we are the employee. We may become the boyfriend or the girlfriend, the husband or the wife, even the father or the mother. You might be a frustrated daughter, a tired employee, or you may see yourself as a failed husband. But none of these roles are all that there is to us. You might be a tired partner, but the higher version of you, the higher self, does not get tired that way. The sun, the earth, the wind, the ocean, they are ever giving and so are you. You are you even after a bad score in an exam, a fight with a family member, after losing your job and even after a breakup. You're not to identify with that bad thing that happened to you or the thing of yours that seems to be crumbling apart. When we let other people's actions or words get to us, upset us and drive us off of our course, when we let ourselves react and self-abandon, we are really shedding all those tears for something that is out of our control. So instead of putting all of our energy on something that is outside the sphere of our influence, we could instead be pouring onto ourselves. You're not going to lose what is meant for you just because of choosing to take care of yourself first. It took me quite many times of life kicking my butt before I realized to stop seeking for that validation from the outside, before I understood to not identify with the struggle, make it the centerpiece of my life that would set my mood and the pace of my life for the next few months. When life and other people seem to fail you, it's normal to try to control everything you can. But guess what? You do not have to fail yourself. You can show up for yourself. Work on your big goal. If you don't have a big goal, work on a small goal. If you don't have even a small goal, do something you love. And if you don't feel like you have love for anything right now, do something you at least like. And if you feel like you don't even like anything right now, brush your teeth, wash your hair, cook a nourishing meal, have a good night's sleep, move your body. Just literally be a human and take care of yourself like you would take care of a beloved one, a family member or a child. If you don't feel grateful right now, your inner child will. Just give yourself a fighting chance by nourishing your body. Our true nature is not of misery. It does not look like unregulated nervous systems, panic attacks, fights, jealousy, lies, denial, passive aggressiveness, betrayal or fear. Our true nature is that of peace. There's so much creativity and wisdom inside of you that is waiting to get out if you just let it flow and stop trying to control everything around you. It has taken me many days of trying to pick myself out of bed, many cups of comforting tea, many circles with my fellow humans and many visits to sacred places to remember one thing. I am capable and there's proof. It was an evening when I felt like nothing I did was giving me the results I wanted. Everything that mattered to me, I was failing at. As usual, I went to the dance class. I had fun, but I was still sad when I came home that night and I was about to go down the rabbit hole to the victim mindset, thinking about all the people that did me wrong and got me into this rut. And then I looked at the video from the dance class. I was killing it. Then I remembered something. 
I did not used to know how to dance a few years ago. I surprised even myself so many times with my capabilities and progress and some of these things I've learned have since become such second nature that I can't even remember anymore that I didn't used to know these things some time ago. Maybe you have some skills like these that you didn't used to know before and now they just flow. Maybe you have a voice that has a melody that moves others. Maybe you're really skilled in taking care of your younger siblings. Maybe you can make any animal around you calm down or maybe you have a really sharp sense of fashion. Then I thought back half a year ago when I started my YouTube channel and I took a look at my subscriber count. 3,000 people who did not even know about my existence were now subscribed to my channel. I thought back two years ago when one summer day I just told my mom that I think one day I want to live in Africa and I took a look around myself. Here I was living in Nairobi. I thought back a decade ago when I decided I wanted to learn Chinese and went to China and learned Chinese. And I thought back to myself in high school when I had chosen the degree program I wanted to get into in the university and there was the high school final exam in that topic. And I got so overwhelmed by all the questions and I started scribbling down notes under every essay question. And back then, we still used to write the exams by hand. I think these days they use computers. And it wasn't really easy to compile something coherent from these notes. I went to the bathroom, I cried a little bit, I came back and I got the maximum points in that national final exam and I got to the degree program that I wanted to. This girl never had a plan B because she was so focused on plan A. She was the girl who would say that she'd do something and make that happen. I was that girl and I had in fact become that woman. This meant that I could in fact grow back my body after losing 10% of my weight in the past few months. I could learn the language that I was hearing everyone around me speaking. So what was I doing letting myself forget who I was just because of something that somebody else did? No, if I could do all those things, I could surely get my smile back. We can hold on to pain for many reasons. Maybe we feel like if we're not in pain, we will let somebody who hurt us off the hook or maybe we feel like we're betraying ourselves letting bad things happen to us and not feeling bad about them you have the strength to let go of what damages the heart and hold on to what heals the heart i joined a gratitude circle in wonder house nairobi a while back with the intention to transform my pain into gratitude you know they say that the biggest hardships are the biggest chances for growth and the biggest heartbreaks can be the biggest heart openers there is a story of a village where people gather with their brooms every dusk when the darkness started to settle in order to work for the whole night to sweep the darkness away. At dawn, when the darkness gave way to light, they would be so proud of their hard work of getting rid of the darkness. One day, an outsider came to the village and after seeing what the villagers were doing, they exclaimed that they could in fact sweep all of the darkness away by themselves. The villagers couldn't believe this because it took the whole village, right? But they decided to give it a try and they went to bed and in the morning they were amazed. This person had, in fact, all by themselves managed to sweep away all of the darkness. Ignorance can make us work and sweep way harder than we in fact need to. You know, the morning will always come, no matter how hard you try to brush away the darkness. So perhaps you could be resting and rejuvenating instead. And of course, letting go and bringing back the best version of you is a journey of learning, of making mistakes, of looking for teachers to ask questions from, trying again and doing some hard work. There are still many dance moves that I don't get. Some of my videos are complete flops. It's been two years since I decided to live in Africa and only now do I have some stability in terms of staying here. I've gotten a weird look from a Chinese man whom I told when I was learning Chinese that I want to take care of him when I actually meant to say that I want to come to say hi to him. But something I've come to realize is that people around me are actually way more tolerant towards my mistakes than I am. I hold such high standards for myself and others. And there's nothing wrong with having standards, but we also need to balance it with some grace. Have you ever made a mistake? <laughs> we all have. And most of the time there is something that we can think of, something we did or said. We wish we could go back just to not see the pain we caused somebody else. 
Maybe they forgave us. Maybe we forgave ourselves. Or maybe we still need to get there. But promise me that you will work towards accepting yourself and forgiving yourself for things that you did or did not do when on survival mode. And it's okay if you can't do this every day, just focus on the next thing. What would your higher self do? Pick yourself up from bed, have a glass of water and go from there? Yes, you can achieve whatever you want, but the road is always not clear. There will be bumps, twists and turns. And the road may also take us through routes that we were not considering. Accept that this is the life and these are the experiences you get to live through. The good, the bad and the ugly. There might be tears, apathy, lack of direction and meaning, but there are so many good things left for you to experience. But pick a path, pick yourself, and that path will take you forward and there's no point of getting stuck and sit there in the middle of the path in a crossroad. If you can pick, pick yourself. Sometimes trusting life, again, might just start with the decision to trust. And for now I choose to trust that as long as I pick myself, all the other puzzle pieces will fall into place.